Good morning, crafty friends. Happy Saturday. Welcome to my craft studio. I am Beth Roy, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today we're going to do coffee and a card and talk about five ways to use your embossing folders. So let's uh, just double check here. I'm live. Everybody can see me. Say good morning when you come in. Good morning, Jenny. I hope everyone is well. I have um, lots of fun things to share with you this morning. And we will, we will get busy in just a second. I'm going to just wait a few minutes to um, let my notifications go out. So feel free to uh, let me know what you've been up to. I hope everyone's had a wonderful week. Good morning, Linda. I have lots and lots of things this morning, and I'm so excited to share this with you. So... Just out of curiosity, if you're watching uh, live or you're watching the replay, um, what is your favorite embossing folder or are you brand new to embossing folders? Um, I personally love embossing folders because I, I think it's a great way to add texture. So beginners don't normally um, delve into this because it involves a cut and emboss machine. And I can completely understand that, but I certainly think that embossing folders um, can be used by all level of crafters. It's just uh, dependent on how much you want to invest when you first start making cards. So when I first started out, I did, I would attend card classes um, and I would use, um, the demonstrators embossing folders and cut and emboss machine and I really loved it so when I decided that I really wanted a cut and emboss machine of my own so that I could just do um, cards with uh, embossing and die cuts on my own at home that's when I decided to join Stampin Up so that I could get the emboss machine um, at a discount. So I have some favorites that are retired that I've used a ton. And so today, most of the cards here, most of my samples are using the current. I have one sample that is does have a retired one, but you may own that one. So I just want to show you some different ways that I've used them. And I'm going to talk about five ways that I use my embossing folders. And I hope that you pick up a tip or two or see a technique that you'd love to try. Yeah, Jenny, I love wood grain. Um, that is just one of my favorites. So we've had several different wood grains over time. Currently we have what they call, let me see. I have all the current embossing folders that I own in front of me. Um, Timber is the one that we currently have in the catalog. Um, I don't even know where my catalog is. <laughs> there we go. So we have lots of embossing folders. They're in the very back of the catalog. So after all the punches, you're gonna see the cut and emboss machine. We do have a mini, and anything that you, you can use the mini on will have a little mini symbol like this throughout the catalog. I prefer to just have the bigger one um, so that I can do everything on one machine. But the mini is cute, and it does fit on your desk. So if you have quick things that you want to do that are three inches or less, that one works really well. So you can kind of see some... Uh, bundles here and some things that Stampin' Up! has put together for you. 
Um, so you certainly can check that out if you have the catalog or look up the cut and emboss machine online uh, in my online store. So you'll see all the dies and things that are bundled and have a discount come first. And then we have all the dies. And then after the dies, you'll see the embossing folders on page 176 and 177. Good morning, Deb. Thanks for joining us. So um, these are all the current ones. And you'll notice I usually highlight what I own and some of them I haven't highlighted because I do have this gingham um, and I like this cloud one I haven't invested in that one yet but I like to highlight what I do already own and we have quite a few different choices um, I don't have any of the flower um, embossing folders uh, I do have retired ones but you can pick lots of different textures and some of them are um, mini folders, meaning they're uh, just over three inches and they work with the mini cut and emboss. Good morning, Vicki. You couldn't find me. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Well, sorry about that. Didn't mean to confuse anyone. I should be right on my page. Um, I'm not sure if it still goes live in the event that I put in the calendar. Um, but I, when I watch, when I go into the event, I can't see comments. I can just see my live video. So it's easier for me to be on my page and view it so I can see everyone's comments. So we have lots of different textures. Um, some of my retired favorites are the subtle folder which I love because I thought it made it look like fabric like a linen and I also liked the I think it was called tasteful textiles or tasteful something that's what I used on this card and it is retired now um, but today we're going to talk about five ways to use your embossing folders so one way that I like to use them is just how they're intended. And I'm gonna show you how to use the cut and emboss machine and emboss a layer. I'm gonna go over real quickly the things I'm going to show you. And then I'm gonna do the layers. And then we'll pick one of those layers to finish off a card. So be thinking as we're doing the techniques, which one you would like to see finished into a card. So on these two cards, you've seen this card, um, I just embossed a layer. I didn't do anything special to it. Um, my layers, I normally use either five and a quarter inches by four inches or five inches by three and three quarter inches. So you can adjust your layer to your card size that you like. <laughs> Linda, I'm sorry. I know it's so hard. I don't, I really don't know what um i try to post in the mornings and let you know like hey hey don't forget but even i noticed even that is not reaching my people so i'm not sure what to do about it anymore <laughs> i try i just hope everyone remembers that's why i started saying set your alarm um just uh but we'll 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 get through we'll make it every morning every saturday so this, these two cards, and even this one, this is the seashell. Now this stamp set's retired, but the seashell um, embossing folder, which works with the stamp set in the dies. Um, so I like to just create texture in my background. That's the purpose of the, what they call dry embossing folders. Um, sometimes when people say embossing, they mean the embossing powder. Oh, I'm sorry, Deb. I hate it that um, it makes it difficult sometimes. So I'm glad y'all finally found me and we're, we're here. So that's one way, as I'm gonna show you just how to emboss. And my number two way is I like to stamp a piece and then emboss it. So you're stamping a piece, a scene, or, um, you know, I, I even like to do one sheet wonders and then cut them up and emboss them to give them texture. 
I used the brick embossing folder on this one. The cone flower set is in, let me tell you the exact name, Nature's Harvest. It's in this set. And it does have coordinating dies. So I try to use a variety. You know teal's one of my favorites, so of course I had to use that. So this is stamping a sheet and then die cutting. Hello, Zanna, good afternoon to you. So I like to do that. So if you do a bunch of layers and then you wanna add texture, you can do that and it's really fun. So uh, that is another way that I do it. Um, and then a third way that I like to do is I like to, I don't, hopefully you guys can see this. It's really cool in person, but I wasn't sure it, show, it really shows up on the camera. I'm not sure if it will. So let me see if I can get the light to hit it. So I colored this flower and then I die cut it. There, there you guys can see it. Let me scoot it over just a tad. Um, and then I added two layers behind it and then I ran it through my folder and gave it texture. So you can die cut a, a layer, anything. It doesn't have to be colored and stamped. It could just be a rectangle and then add some texture. So you can use your die cuts and add texture. Um, and this is one, again, this was um, the gingham and I just, instead of using a full sheet, I just used a little sliver. I like doing this layout a lot. If you see my cards, you'll see that a lot. Um, so you can do your die cuts. Uh, let's see. The Let's do this one. So the fourth way that I like to use my embossing folders is I like to emboss my layer and then add ink. So there's two ways I do this. I'm gonna show you both ways. This card is made, I added ink to the raised areas after I embossed it, okay? So this is the same thing. I added ink after I embossed and I just used a blending brush and I'm gonna show you this technique. I'm gonna show you both ways. So don't, no worries. Um, Again, this one as well, I added, I used my blending brush and I just added some ink over top of that raised part. The other way I add ink is I add ink to the embossing folder and then run it through. So I, I add ink to my embossing folder and this one is actually a, a double. I like to combine these a lot. I die cutted the piece I wanted, then I stuck it in an inked embossing folder and ran it through. So I actually have, this is the paint, um, let me make sure I tell you the right name. This is the, oh my goodness, where, where is it at? The painted texture. And then this is the one that retired that looks like fabric as well. I like the two that look like fabric, they're retired. I still use them. If you have them, still use them. So this had lots of layers and then I added some texture in there with an inked embossing folder. And then the fifth way that I like to use my embossing folders, and we don't have um, a lot of patterns that I would do this with, but I use the subtles this way all the time, is I embossed it one direction and it's kind of hard to see and then I turned my paper and ran it through the other direction. So you can kind of see, let me see if I can get the light to hit it right. You can kind of see I have lines going this direction from the first time I embossed it and then I flipped it and it has lines going the other way. So to me, this almost looks like a basket weave, but it's actually the stripes folder. So those are the five things I'm going to show you how to do today. So let me put these in order. So those are my card samples and we're going to learn embossing today. So let me put 
let me see. Let me see where I can throw these so I can fit my cut and emboss in here. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my cut and emboss in. Now, when you're embossing, oops, the, this is going to, your platforms tell you what you need. So when you're embossing, you do not need this number two. This is for cutting. So you'll need platform number one. If you have um, one of the embossing folders, for instance, this gingham, it doesn't say 3D, so to emboss, you'll use, and my plates aren't labeled, um, but normally they say number three on them. I had some that accidentally didn't get labeled um, from our manufacturer. So you would use plate number three, and then we'll just use this one so I can show you real quick. Let me grab, um, let me grab a color. So you can see it. I have, I keep um, some of my cardstock pre-cut in these kind of things. Um, they're photo holders. So this is, I'm going to guess, yep, this is five and a quarter by four. And typically our embossing folders are marked with a line and stampin' up and that's considered the front of the embossing folder. Now that doesn't mean you can't use either side. So pick the pattern how you like the lines to try to help you line it up. I don't always get it in there well, but that's okay. So you're gonna put the seam in first and then another plate number three. Oops, sorry, let me scoot my table back. And then you just run it through your cut and emboss. So how many watching have a cut and emboss machine and embossing folders? So when you take it out, you can see this is the embossed side. That was the side that said Stampin' Up. And then this is what you could call the debossed side. So really you could use either side, whichever side you like. And this one, it's pretty much the same because it's a gingham pattern, but some of them will be different. And I'm gonna show you that because I'm gonna do the honeycomb and that's a 3D folder. So when you have a 3D folder, let me put this back and I'm gonna do that on some basic white because I'm gonna use it later when we add some ink. So I, or it's, I call it a honeycomb, it's called Hive and it says 3D on there. So you're going to Use plate one, you're gonna put this down, and remember, this is on on right here, um, on the top, where's my paper, there it is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a piece of just basic white, and this is five by three and three quarters. I'm gonna put it in there. I'm not worried about it being perfectly straight. Vicki, good question. I don't believe I have. I I mean, yes, I've been making cards for a long time, but I don't recall mixing folders. Um, so I don't know, I haven't tried that. Now, when you run an embossed piece back through, it's gonna flatten that design and put the new design on, but you certainly could, I mean, Worst case scenario is you test it out and you don't like it. Um, so we use number one, we have our piece of paper in our embossing folder, and then we're gonna use this plate four. Now all of these plates come with the cut and emboss machine. So you can buy replacements. I'm pretty tough, I'm pretty rough on my pieces, so you can buy replacements. So we're just gonna run this through and the 3D em embossing folders just give a deeper impression. So when you take this out, remember this is considered the front. So you'll see 
the hive is actually this direction, but I often use this side. So have some fun with it. We're going to add ink to this one. And I'll show you that, that in just a little bit. So that is just how to use the embossing folders. And then you would just add it to your layer. So the next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to add ink to an embossing folder. I don't have a stamped layer. I'm gonna to have to stamp a layer and then emboss it. Let's grab out this piece. So I've got another piece. We'll stamp that in a second. Um, but let's do this one while we're here. So I know I'm kind of going out of order of what I said, but I will show you some that I did. Let me show you some that I already did. Oops, dropped my flowers. This is one where I applied it to both sides of the embossing folder, and this is the result. I'm not sure which one I like. <laughs> so I'll use them. I was actually thinking of a fall card with some bees um, and flowers. And then I tried this one. This was the time-worn type. And I just did the technique of adding ink to the embossing folder with my ink pad. Um, and I think I, I'm not sure if this was just too busy. I'm not sure how I feel about this one. But I'm going to show you another way to apply the ink. So we're going to do that next. I'm going to move this out of the way just while I apply the ink. And then I will show you how, we're, how you run it through. Oops, I'm all, I'm all um, messed up here. So let's do, um, I'm gonna just pick what I have on top here, basic gray, and I'm gonna grab the timber folder. So I love a good wood grain. So I'm gonna grab this folder. This is a 3D folder, and I'm gonna ink both sides just so that you can see how it comes out. So, let's see, just catching up here for a second. So, Deb, you have the old Big Shot. Yeah, I have one of those, too, um, and lots of embossing folders, several. Vicky too. Oh, I've never heard of the Vagabond machine. I know there's lots and lots of different brands. Um, and so I, I've only tried what Stampin' Up! has sold, but Sizzix, they used to sell the Sizzix Big Shot, and, um, I think they all work about the same. I know there's some that are electric, so, um, you know, if you have a problem cranking, I would definitely look into investing in something like that. Zana, do you, do you have lots of embossing folders? I tend to keep most of mine. If it's a one that I've used a lot, I tend to keep it and I use it even when they retire. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. You know me in basic gray. So one way to add ink is you just press it onto your folder. So it's ink pad to the folder. And you'll see this is the debossed. This is the front. So if you're trying to combine things, and I'll show you when we do the brick what I mean, you'll want to pay attention to that. So I say, you know, I, like I do with everything, you have to practice. So you can see I just inked that up very gently. I don't want to hurt my foam pad. You can also use, and I'm going to probably redo, try some with this one. You can also take a blending brush and ink it up and apply ink or a sponge dauber or something like that. Or if you have a brayer, so you can do that as well. So what I'm gonna do now is just decide which way you want your wood grain to go and then put it in. And I'm gonna do it this direction. So I'm gonna do both sides at once. You don't have to ink both sides. I'm just doing it for the demonstration purpose to show you that if you're not sure which side you want to use, 
you could do this and then decide after you emboss it. So I'm gonna bring this back in and I have my platform one hinge side and then I need this gray number four because it is a 3D folder. And this is a wide folder, so I like, um, I really like it because you can do bigger pieces. And, and if you want, you can run it through twice to really get that ink to transfer. I'm just gonna press on it a little and then open it. Now, it is messy. You're gonna get ink on your fingers. You could use the tweezers that come in the emboss, um, with the embossing tray or a craft pair of tweezers. So this is one side. This is the side that says Stampin' Up on the embossing folder. And then here's the other side. And I just love this texture. So that's one way to add ink is directly to your embossing folder. Now to clean this, I forgot my wipes. I just have baby wipes that I keep in my craft room for my fingers and any other mishaps I have. And I just quickly wipe it. Now to, if you use a dark color and it doesn't seem to wanna come off or it stains a little bit with this technique, you can wash it in your sink with some mild soap and water. So I'm just going to do this for right now and kind of clean it up. And I like to um, clean them a little bit. You just wanna make sure your wipe is not leaving behind um, any lint. So again, you can wash it under the sink as well. So if you wanna do a bunch of cards, you just keep inking and then you can um, clean up when you're done. So let me see. So let me see, what else do I have here? We're going to, um, let me show you how I added ink. I skipped to my fourth way right away. So I'm sorry about that. I'm kind of going, jumping around, but hopefully you're taking notes. So I'm going to show you um, a couple other things. I got to prep a couple things before we do the next one. So let's go ahead and get stamping. Let me grab some scrap here and I have I'm gonna do that ocean scene you could um, you could use the sailboat um, you could use this one or uh, these um, I used adventure awaits from this set but I'm just gonna stamp a really simple scene and then we're going to run it through the embossing folder so I have these colors already here and I need my foam mat. I'm just gonna grab the mat from my Stamparatus because it's right here. Put that under there because these are photopolymer. And I've got Bermuda Bay, I've got Pool Party and I've got Crumb Cake. Ooh, yeah, I love inking them. It's messy, but I like to be a messy crafter, so the mess might not be for you. I'm gonna show you, um, oh, I totally, I totally messed that up, didn't I? Hold on, before we stamp this, I got ahead of myself, didn't I? I wanna bring this in with my scrap. Let me throw this to the side. I got ahead of myself. This is called adult ADHD. <laughs> Just bear with me. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, we did the ink this way. So let me show you the other way really quick. Uh, let me grab, let me grab a brush here. I grab this one and I'm using Bermuda Bay for this anyway. I'm gonna show you, you can ink this side. Remember I said this is technically the other side. Um, this was the side that I think is the intended so it has different raised, it's raised differently. It looks like a honeycomb or a hive. So I'm just going to grab my ink and grab a blending brush. 
So this is inking your piece. Let me see my cards here. So this was this way and these are this method. I hope that helps. If you guys have any questions, chime in. If you feel like um, you don't understand something, just ask me. So I've inked up my blending brush and I'm just going to brush it over this where I want a little bit of ink. And I did do this with Pool Party and then it didn't show up as well as I wanted. I felt like I had to use too much ink. So that's why I'm using Bermuda Bay. But you certainly could use whatever color you wanted. So if you wanted to make a fall card and you wanted fall colors on here, then you could choose whatever colors you have. So that's how you're just going to add. And I'm not pressing hard. I'm just going over top of this so it hits all the raised parts. You can also do this side, and I didn't make a card this way, but I love the effect, and I probably will, well, I will use these to make cards, but, so you can go do this, and you can do the whole sheet, or just a little bit, just a little in the middle, whatever you like, but I love this effect. I really like this texture. So there you have it. So that's just adding ink. If you don't have blending brushes, you could use um, a brayer if you have one of the foam brayers or one of the older brayers or sponge daubers. You just wanna make sure that you're using a light pressure because you don't want ink to get into all the areas. You want it to just hit the raised areas. So this is the hive and you can do both sides. So how many of you have done this? Oh, um, so that's two ways to add ink to your embossed piece. You can add it directly to the folder or you can add it afterwards. Okay, I'm gonna leave that open because now I'm gonna stamp that. So I have a lot of those layers. I do like to do that. Sometimes I do my embossed layers and then I need something. I need it to show up better. And I, that's a great way um, to add Add a little bit of color to that texture. So the next one I'm gonna show, we're, we're gonna stamp this. And I'm gonna do the embossing folder. So let me bring this in. And I'll bring my piece in. And I like to start with my middle piece. And it just barely fits on this D block. So probably should be using a bigger block, but it works. So I'm just gonna ink this up. And like I said, you could do flowers or any stamped piece. Now this one was um, a little skinnier. I think it's two, two and a half, or yeah two and three quarters inches wide, but I'm just gonna make this one um, in the middle and then we'll just emboss the whole thing. It reminds me of like um, if somebody um, like painted on a wall or something, that's what uh, the effect reminds me of. That's why I chose the brick. I just liked it. So, oops, let me, but you could also, stamp something and use the timber, which I'm gonna show you with the flower that I'm going to die cut and then emboss. So uh, sometimes I like to, like I said, combine the techniques. So it's really up to you, but I hope you'll give them a try. So this is the top part here. Like I said, it's probably meant to go on this block probably works a little bit better. And I'm going to use a 
Yes, Linda. Um, I have heat embossed, not my folders, but I have, I have embossed things and then rubbed Versamark over it and added embossing powder and heated it. And when I had, when we had the settles folder, which I said looked like linen, I would emboss strips one direction, turn them, emboss the other direction, and then smear Versamark pad all over it and heat emboss to make it look like shiny ribbon. So yes, I, um, yes, I have done that, but I haven't done it directly onto the fol folder, if that's what you mean. Um, Yes, Vicki, you can buy Versamark in a pen. So, so I have heat embossed after I have embossed it, dry embossed with my machine. I have done that. There are so many techniques. So I, I try, I wanted to try to keep it manageable today just because there's so many ways I like to use them. And like I said, sometimes I'm, I combine the ways that I'm using them. So I hope I've just given you a few ideas to start trying. So on this top part, I actually stamped off first and then stamped. And this is a little shorter because this was five and a half. And that's okay. And then I just kind of stamped off and kept stamping this and created my sky. I love this um, ocean front. It doesn't have greetings, but I, I think it pairs really well with any greetings that you have. If you like beach scenes or just water scenes, I think this is wonderful. I love the texture and look of this set. And then this is the ground piece. I'm actually going to put it. Vicki, I just saw your comment corner to corner. Yes, I do like to do uh, when I'm sponging or applying brushing on color. I do like to do corner to corner. Or sometimes I look at what I'm uh, stamping and I, I think about how it's laying on top of where I'm putting the color. But corner to corner is a good a good uh, layout. Good morning, Marilyn. No worries about being late. We are just going over the techniques um, for the embossing folders and you can always um, go back and watch the beginning to see the couple techniques and the how to, how to use the embossing machine when we're all done. So, oh, you know what? I didn't use crumb cake on this. I used gray granite, but we're going to use crumb cake. <laughs> so, no worries. No worries. I'm trying to figure out. I think it goes this direction. So, I'm just stamping this. And then I like to stamp it again. So, it's like stamping off. And then I'm going to stamp off. And I'm going to turn it upside down and stamp this direction. Just to fill in that space a little bit. Now I did add in, it looks like I added in some dots. Sorry, I think I hit my my stand and I'm shaking. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant when I was sponging. Sorry, I saw your comment and so I didn't, I didn't realize what it went with. Yes, um, yeah, sometimes I just, I have a lot of the different size blocks, so I usually just grab a different, a different block. So I'm going to stamp this off, and then I'm going to add some of these, um, oops, this dotage, or little sand speckles throughout the bottom. So we have our stamped sheet. Now we're going to emboss it. So I've stamped my simple stamped piece and I want to take it to the next level. So let me get these inks out of the way. 
and bring back in my machine. And I'm gonna use the brick. So if you love the wood texture, you can use the wood or whatever texture um, that you like. You could even do the seashells. That would be, that'd be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? Do you guys wanna do the wood? Or I'm sorry, not the wood, the brick. This is called brick and mortar. That's what I used on this one. Or let me find that seashell one. Maybe that would be really cool. The other one I use a ton is that painted texture. But we have this, sh the seashells. So you could do that on this as well. What do you guys think? You guys wanna do a choice here? I mean, I'm showing the, the technique and we are gonna make some cards, but you know, maybe you guys would like to get involved a little. So this is what it looked like with the brick. Or we could try this one and put it over top of this. Vicki votes for the shells. Sorry for the glare, my light's hitting this plastic. I like to keep my embossing folders in the original packaging. I just cut off the top part that has the sticky on it. So if you pop in, say hi. I, I know uh, maybe a few people have come on. Um, I'm just going over embossing techniques. Deb votes seashells. Barbara, good morning. She votes seashells. All right, try the shells. Marilyn says shells. Sorry, I had to grab a quick sip of coffee. Let's do it. So this is a 3D, so I'm gonna take these number three plates away and we'll need our number four plate. And again, now here's where this can get tricky. And sometimes it might matter and sometimes it might be, it might not. It depends on how you want it to look. So this embossing folder actually works with dies as well. These seashells have dies in that stamp set. So this is supposed to be the front. Here's the line and the stampin' up. So you can kind of feel this is the part that's going to be raised because it's, it's bumped up over here. So if you wanted the seashells to kind of go back into um, your stamped area, you're gonna wanna do it this direction. And I'll show you when we do it. I'm gonna do it this way so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, sometimes this might take a little practice. On a lot of my folders, I have an X um, because when we had Sizzix and then Stampin' Up, we switched manufacturers. And so some of my folders, it's opposite or I don't remember which direction they were supposed to go. So that's just how I try to remember. It's not the end of the world if you if it's the opposite way, unless maybe, you know, your preference. It depends on your preference. So I just am using the Stampin' Up side with the line. And that, we know that's supposed to be the front or how it was intended, but you can use it either direction. So it goes platform one, our embossing folder with the hinge first and our paper inside and then number four. And then we're just going to run that through. I'm trying to go a little slower. I'm, I know I'm, I'm shaking you guys all over the place. So when that comes out, when you open it up, you'll see this is the shells and these areas are raised. So on the back side is the debossed side. So if you would want your shells to go down instead of up on your layer, you would have turn this face down instead of face up. So hopefully that makes sense and I didn't confuse you all. Um, just practice with it and give it a try and see which way you like it. So that's fun. Now this one's wider than my sample and that's okay. What do you guys think? I like it. Now we can add a greeting. So that's that's the other 
one of the other ways is to, I'm going to move this out for just a second, is to stamp a layer and then add texture to it. Now, the next way I'm going to show you is this card right here. So this is the fourth way that I'm going to use my embossing folders today. And I already have a piece that I've colored. Let me bring in this piece. So I've colored this. And this is from the Blessings of Home. It's a large flower and it has a coordinating die. So I'm going to show you what I did here. I am going to bring in my folder and I need to grab another piece. One moment, please. I forgot to cut this. I have too many things on my desk. <laughs> too many things. I'm just cutting a piece of basic white so I can show you. Um, I think I'll need an extra one. So on this one, you may have seen this on the page. Um, I colored and then I colored around my image. So we're going to finish it off. I used light. Oh, that's dark. I want light, smoky slate. Where I have, oh, it's in here. It's hiding from me. So I used light, smoky slate, and I'm just going to fill in my image anywhere that it's white. You could leave it white if you want, and if you don't like going around the edge, you can um, you can just leave it white. It doesn't have to be filled in. I just wanted it to have a little bit of separation from my base, from my card base, because I had planned on using um, white cardstock. Now, if you're using, you know, for instance, basic gray, one of my other favorite card bases, then you could just leave the edges white uh, and, and just die cut it and emboss. So I'm just going to go quickly around this and I'm not being perfect. I'm not worried about that. I am trying to fill in any space in here where there would be white space. And yes, I normally turn my image like this. I'm just, I'm just trying to hurry. So when you're doing this, you can take as long as you want to color. I will tell you the colors I used for the flowers uh, because I kind of came up with a combination I hadn't expected. Uh, on this one, I used dark petal pink, the Natural Tones 1000, which is a very pink color, and Calypso Coral. I used mostly the light Calypso Coral. It worked really well with that natural um, 1000. So the, the natural blends come in numbers and they come in sets of two, just like all of our blends, but they're two distinct colors. And the 1000 is the light. But it's a beautiful pink. So I've been using it for pinks and not really a skin tone color, but I just like it. It really works well with Calypso Coral. And I can always go back if I didn't scribble far enough away, I could go back after I die cut it and add in. So we're going to bring in the die cutting machine. I'm going to cut this and two extra die cuts that have nothing on them. They're just going to be basic white because I have this, I don't know if you can see on the card, this is actually three layers and then we're going to emboss it. So I wanted it to look like I painted a piece of wood and cut it out. So, and I love it. You can see the texture in person. Hopefully it's coming through on the screen. It's just really cool. So I like doing this. It's almost like adding um, the texture uh, to your stamped layer, but I'm just using a die cut. And you can obviously use it on a die cut like a rectangle with no stamping um, and make a layer out of it or um, 
you can use it on a colored die cut. So to die cut, I need to bring in my number two plate and then I'm gonna have a number three plate. And I like to keep, here's a little tip that I do. Um, this needs flipped over. I do flip this back and forth as I'm cutting to help the warping. But I keep one sheet, one plate on the bottom that I cut on. And then I use one clean plate. Mine's not very clean, but it's not cut. It does have some impressions on it, but um, it isn't actually cut. I use one clean plate on top. So when I open a new package, I only take one plate out and the plate that's been on my top, and I flip this one as well when I run it through, I flip it to help with the warping. I put this one on the bottom and I only take one clean plate out of my pack. So I try to make my plates last a little longer like that um, so I don't have to replace it as often. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in the coordinating die. And this is, these are called Flowers of Home. Oops, and I'm gonna grab that. And so we have platform one, plate two, or the sh I guess it's like a shim for cutting. Oh my goodness, don't throw your die. Um, then a plate three, and then our paper and our die. Just trying to line it up as best I can. I'm not worried about if it's perfect because I've colored the edge. So as long as I'm not cutting anything off, I'm not worried if it's even. And I use a little piece of post-it tape to hold it down. And then we have plate three. Good morning, Dad. Thanks for joining us. So what I'm gonna do now, so this is our top layer that I've colored and stamped and made all pretty. Now I'm just gonna take that die and I'm gonna cut two more pieces. You can see my machine gets a lot of use. <laughs> it is well loved. So I'm just going to, I don't know if I can fit three cutouts on this sheet, but we'll see what we can get. It is a large die piece. So you could use smaller pieces and so I just need a couple plain pieces. Let's see if I can get one more out of this. I don't know that it's going to squeeze. Will it, will it? Let's try. I don't care if it's perfect. We'll put it on the bottom. This is just gonna give a little dimension to that stamped layer that I want to emboss. Now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this away for a second so I can glue that. My arms are getting a workout today. So I'm going to uh, just adhere these together Oh, out of curiosity, who has looked at the weekly deals? Stampin' Up! is doing weekly deals. We've got, we're in week two. Week two started on the 8th. There's a lot of um, pretty things on there. Things for sale, on sale. And I like using liquid when I do this because I can kind of play with it and manipulate it and make sure that I have everything lined up. And it's okay if it's not perfect. Um, you can always just come back in with your, your stamp and blends or your, or a blending brush or a sponge and get those edges. And I see I, I missed a little bit here. So I'm going to come in and color this in around these flowers. There we go. 
Now I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. You can also put a block on top of it. Oh, I don't blame you, Deb. I noticed, um, I noticed that they overlapped for one, I think it was one day. So I haven't gone back in this morning to see if the deals are still on there from last week. Um, and I do own a lot of those things, but a lot of the embellishments, if you're looking to maybe stock up, it's something you want to use on your holiday cards. That would be a great time to get your glue and get uh, some of those other little things um, that you want to use. Barb, I own a lot of them too, Barbara. Um, but like I said, if it's an embellishment and you're planning on using a lot of them, that's a great time. Or I love the, the craft note cards. If you like to make Christmas gifts and you like the craft note cards, they come with a box. Um, I know those were on there. Um, so those are great. All right. So I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to bring this back in. Now I have another question. I use the timber on this one. Would you guys like to see a different embossing folder? I'm going to put my die away while you answer that question. Um, I'm trying to think, let me give you a choice here. I used the timber folder, or would you like to see, let me see, would you like to see the paint texture? So timber or T or paint or P? Let's make it simple. T or P? And I'm going to put my die away while we're, while you're deciding. No, oh, I understand, Zana. I'm not buying a lot right now either. I do, I, I um, I do have a lot that I need to use, so I completely understand that. But if you want to maximize um, your dollars and you see something on there that you were planning to use, then it, if you can swing it, it would. It's nice to stock up a little bit. But I definitely understand. So we're going to take this piece and run it through with an embossing folder. I see a lot of painted texture. I love it. You guys are switching it up on me this morning, and I love it. All right, let's do it. So you saw the card with the timber. Now we're going to try it with this. And this is a 3D, so I'm going to take my number two, which is for cutting, and my number three plates away, and I bring in my number four plate. I have stuff all over my desk. <laughs> if you know me, you're not surprised. Now, this is an older folder. So it doesn't have the line. It does have the Stampin' Up! logo. So we're just going to go with that. And this one, I don't know that it matters a whole lot. You can kind of feel the texture. This is one I love to add ink to. I did that on the In the Moments card. I love... Um, doing that and I do it often like I did that one with the timber where I added ink to both sides and then I decide which side I like the best. So we're just gonna toss this in there and I'm gonna close it and hinge first and then plate number four. Ooh, how many people are gonna play with embossing folders today? I know I've been playing with them all week. I play with embossing folders a lot. I really like adding the texture. So again, this is the Stampin' Up! logo. We're going to open it. Wow, that's pretty cool. I don't know which side I would have liked better, but can you guys see it? It's a really cool texture. Now, if you wanted, here's another one. You can put that back in there. Let's do it, let's do it this way. So this was the logo side. I'm gonna put it face down and we're gonna do it the other way. Let's just, let's just experiment a little bit. So I'm running it through twice. <coughs> Excuse me. 
I did switch the direction of my piece. Oh, now it has a lot of texture. Can you guys see it? Is it coming through? I'm trying to wait for my computer to catch up so I can see. So it's really a really cool texture on there and it raises everything up and you can kind of see on the back too. <coughs> Excuse me. So I love doing this. I love, it just takes the, your card to the next level. So let me, we're gonna start gathering these pieces here. Let me just put them in a pile real quick. These are the ones that we've done. I have one more technique. And this is what we're going to do. So just for reference, this is that paint texture and I added ink to the folder. So I love that folder for that. It's, it's really fun. Okay, so we have, we're on to our last one. Here's number five. And we're gonna do this layer one direction and then we're gonna turn it and do it the other direction. So be thinking, I'm gonna show you how to do this one really quick. Um, I don't know that there's a ton of embossing folders that I would do this with that we have current, but like I said, the one that I did before was the Settles or that Tasteful Textile. Um, because the patterns were really cool to switch back and forth. Uh, let me grab a white piece of paper somewhere I have. There it is. I'm just going to grab out um, a basic white, and it is five and a quarter inches by four. And I'm going to use this Stripes. Now this is a mini folder, it's considered a mini. They come two in a pack. And I'm gonna show you how I made it all the way across. So I'm gonna use this stripes. And these are 3D, so I'm gonna keep my plate number four. Oh, fun, Xana, that bundle looks so cute. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it about halfway. And remember, here's our logo. So we want this to go in the front. If you want them perfectly straight, because they're, they're not actually straight stripes, but if you want them pretty straight, then use your line at the bottom. So I put it about halfway. I've got platform one, my folder with the hinge first, paper inside, and then number four. So because this is a mini folder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this and slide this over here. That's why you want to do it about halfway so you have enough room to fit it on your platform. Can you guys see that? So you want to have enough room to fit it on your platform again. Which flower set, Vicki? So I've made this go all the way across and this is a gorgeous um, background. I love this. You could even stamp and to me this almost looks like wood grain as well um, because of the way the stripes are not perfect. Um, so you could stamp and do this but we're going to add a little extra texture and we're going to turn it this way. So again I'm going to go about halfway. and I want it to fit on my platform. So I'm gonna do it again. So I've just turned my paper and put
put it in the embossing folder the other way. Ooh, yeah, this one would be great for the flower. Now I did it a little sideways, whoops. That's okay, we're not gonna worry about that. That's all right. I'm just gonna put it back in and I'm gonna try to do it straight. I must have moved it. Now I did this half, now I'm gonna do this half. This would be great with that flower die cut. I didn't think about that. But this one would probably show up really well. It's a very deep embossing folder. So I'm just doing the rest of that one, that one side, so that it's all the way across. So you can, oh, I'm stuck. You can see that texture it did flatten that first couple passes we did on, on the other direction. And now it's, it almost, um, it almost reminds me of a plaid, <laughs> but it, it does flatten that first embossing. So that is the fifth way is switch it around one, run it in one direction and then change it and run it through again. So, the name of this folder is Stars and Splatters. So it's, it's one that shows like this in the catalog that comes with two. Okay, now we're ready to finish up. So I've shown you the just the using it as normal, inking either the folder or adding ink after you've embossed, stamping a layer and embossing, coloring, die cutting, and then embossing, or embossing one direction, taking your paper out, turning it, embossing it again. So which one would you like to finish into a card? I know we're right at 10, um, or a little bit after 10, and it took a little while to go over all five of the techniques I used, but I really wanted you guys to get a lot of value out of this morning. Um, I love embossing folders. I will probably show more throughout the week, um, but I wanted to really just show you these great products that you can use to just take your card up a little bit. So if you own a cut and emboss machine, or maybe you're a beginner, but you're ready to dive in and you wanna get the cut and emboss machine, embossing folders are wonderful. And then of course, I love having the opportunity to do die cuts and different things. But embossing is one of the next ways to really bump up your cards or just have a little fun with it. So, Deb votes for flowers. <laughs> Sorry, Vicki. You know me. I like to give hard choices. <laughs> well, let's eliminate some. How about we eliminate? This is pretty basic. So, let's take those out. You guys have seen tons of cards I do with those. Um, let's see. I showed quite a few samples of this. So I just layer on top and I make it really simple. I try to just add a little bit to this. You could even combine these. So don't be afraid to, to combine all the different things. You could even combine these. That might be too busy. Maybe you like it that way. So we could combine them or even this and that would have two different textures on there. This is really fun. I made a really simple card. I had all these birds. Remember all those birds I colored a few weeks ago and I had some leaves and I just threw a card together really quick. So I like this because it adds so much texture. You don't have to add a ton, a sentiment, a greeting, a little flower, um, and your card's all finished. And then I loved this. This I would just adhere it to the front and add a greeting. 
The flowers in the wood. All right, we're combining two techniques. I love it, love it. So let's let's get all of those out of the way. Oops, wrong, wrong piece. Now we need side A, the full wood. And I would probably do it like this and maybe put my greeting down here. So side A, where it's really dark and you see all the little wood grains, or do you want side B, where you just get the negative effect and it really looks more white, and then the, the lines are gray. So side A, side B. And you guys know we have to pick a, a card base. I was trying to see what I had cut in nearby. Hmm. Wonder what it would look like. So I'm I'm just waiting on to see what side you say, and I'm gonna grab a piece. I don't know I don't know if I like it or how I feel about it, but I'm gonna cut this piece while y'all are telling me which side you want. is what I'm thinking. So I see a lot of votes for side A. And I'm wondering how it will look on a piece of Calypso coral. Obviously we could do neutral, we could do white or gray, or even smoky slate would look good. I only see two votes. Anyone else have a vote? So we're gonna finish our card. piece for the inside. So when I do my inside piece, this is just my preference, something I do. This layer is five inches by three and three quarter inches. So I like to pick the same size to go on the inside of my card. And let me grab out that stamp set. We have this stamp set for greetings. I have a lot of things on my desk here. They're falling over everywhere, going every which way. And here's the stamp set that I used. Now on my original card, let's pull that in. I didn't use a layer. I just put it right onto a piece of cardstock and I actually used this cut down, so I cut off that for inspiring me, or you could just not stamp it. So, so you think the top left corner for the greeting? So, Calypso Coral, side A, and then a greeting up here is Vicky's. Vote. I'm just grabbing a scrap um, a scrap piece here. Not sure what size I used, but I cut it down. So I'm grabbing a scrap piece here to cut down. And I'm gonna make it a thank you card. I'm just gonna do, or we could, we could say, have a perfect birthday. Do you guys wanna do the thank you where we don't use the bottom part or have a perfect birthday? Grab another strip here. So I have lots of paper strips from cutting my layers and I like to find greetings that will fit on these so I can use them up. So, Here's what it would look like with side B. I don't think anyone voted for this side. And I'm making a landscape card. You could turn this and make a portrait card. 
completely up to you, your preference. I'm just changing it up. And this can go either direction. So if you want your greeting down here, or you want it like this, and you're greeting over here or over here. Okay, have a perfect birthday. I only see one vote. So I'm just trying to kind of hurry. I don't I know. I know it's Saturday morning and and y'all want to get started. Now we could use basic gray. So here's our process in deciding. Let me see what other color I have over here. I don't have Calypso over here. We could also use Calypso Coral or we could use the green. We could use Old Olive. I used all, I have Pear Pizzazz here. That could work. So let's see. I'm going to give you three choices. We've I see another vote. Hello, Sandra. I see another vote for birthday. And so I have the have a perfect birthday. We're going to use up our strip there. And Calypso Coral, Pear Pizzazz, or Gray. So just say Gray, Green, or Coral. Sandra votes green or coral. Xana says green or gray. Anyone else? Vicki, what do you think? A lot of votes for green. That does help pull in the green because we've used a lot of gray and we're using a coral base and our flowers are mostly that coral. Oh, Linda, yay, you're still here. I wasn't sure who was still here. If I don't see you comment very often, I'm not sure. I know sometimes people pop out. Well, let's just go with Pear Pizzazz. I love this green. It's a very, very pretty shade of green. And I'm just tapping. And I wanna make sure that I'm not getting an edge around here. Looks like my H got a little heavy on the ink. You could also use the Stamparatus. And you'll notice, I like to look at my words. This rubber is not cut straight. So my word starts up, my phrase starts up here and it kind of goes sideways. So it's not perfect to my sticker, but we're going to, we're gonna do our best. Hopefully, it, nope, not straight. <laughs> Flip it over, ink. Ink it again. And I can remember this side has more on the bottom. So I'm going to put it up just a tad. Nope, that's not straight either. New strip. <laughs> Here. I'm going to, oops, I'm going to stamp on this one and cut it down. <laughs> so sometimes I like to use my Stamparatus for this reason because it's hard to account for if that's truly in line. I could probably cut my stamp. I don't really like that one. Okay, we're gonna make one of these work. I think the bottom one might be okay. Let me grab my trimmer here. So just make sure you're checking because you don't you don't want to um, stamp right onto something and then not not have it be as straight as you like. Sometimes I let me see. I'm just going to use my scissors. Do we have corals? I see a lot of greens. So, I'm just gonna use my scissors. Let's hope that I can cut straight. Okay. 
And if it's not perfect, well, we'll live. It'll be okay. I don't have a super long set of scissors, but that would have been perfect. So I can keep that piece for later. You can also use your trimmer to trim it down. I think it looks pretty good. I did okay. So actually I'm gonna trim this end and this end. Okay, so let's pull our card back down here. And here's our layer and we can put this here. And it's okay if it goes over the flower. Now this does have some dimension. So you, you could add a piece of um, the foam, a foam strip. So what do you guys think? Do you like this layout? I can't hardly hold on to anything. So I can use a glue dot and attach it here and then put a foam strip to help um, hold it up a little bit because this has three layers on it. And I'm going to just adhere that straight down. So what do you guys think? I'm going to move some extra pieces here. And while you're thinking, I'm going to quickly stamp this really pretty flower on my inside piece here. So here's our card. This doesn't quite fit on this block, but... It'll be okay. I'm going to take my basic gray. And I re want to remember to stamp my inside piece to go landscape because that's how I'm making the outside of my card. And I'm not too worried about this down here. I'm going to let it hang off my page a little bit, my, my layer. And we're just going to stamp right on the inside. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and start assembling here. So here's our, our card base is five and a half by eight and a half, and it's scored at four and a quarter. So I like to take my eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and I score it at four and a quarter, and then I turn it and cut it at five and a half and I get two card bases. So grab your favorite adhesive and start assembling. And put this on the inside. Now it's all ready for my message. You could color it too. If you wanted to color it with blends to match the outside, you could add color. Now I'm going to start assembling this. Hopefully everybody likes it because I didn't see any comments. Of course it could be, could be Facebook. So I'm gonna adhere the side down. I'm just trying to get it even all the way around. Now I'm gonna adhere this piece. Now when you have um, textured layers, my recommendation is to use a very, very strong glue. There's a lot of nooks and crannies in there when we're adding texture. So either use liquid glue or you can use the Seal Plus or the Tear and Tape. I'm trying to get this kind of in the middle, but I'm putting it more down toward that right hand side. And then I'm going to bring in, we have these foam strips. Thank you. And I'm going to put a foam strip on this side. And I'm going to use a glue dot down here so that it overlaps my flowers just a tad. So I love these. They, they're little skinny strips. You can use them to make shaker cards. Um, or I like to use them on thin strips instead of trying to cut up dimensionals. And I, I'm just going to cut a piece. You can cut 
them down to whatever size you need. Make sure I put it on the right end here. And I'm going to put it on this end. Since this, this piece has three layers and a little dimension, I want to be able to stick this up just a tad. And it's a little higher than, than a dimensional. The dimensionals are. It's a little bit thicker, but that's okay. We're going to grab a glue dot just to help it stay on there. You don't have to have that. I just put it on just to make it a little more stable. Here's my glue dots. Press that down and pick up a glue dot. And then this is double sided. So then you just peel this piece. It's like a dimensional. And here we go. Squish it down a little bit. There we go. So you can also use um, this edge of your dimensionals, especially the minis. They have, um, I have all these little things laying here. I cut all these little edges off and use them. So you can cut down um, your dimensionals. If you don't have foam strips, you can cut down the edges of your dimensionals and make it work for this little tiny strip. So there's our finished card with one of our, well, actually two of our embossing techniques. What do you guys think? I love it. Thank you so much for joining me this morning and helping me make this beautiful card. Let's pull in some of our others. Here was the original that I did. If you would like to purchase any of these Stampin' Up! products, um, or check out the weekly deals, feel free to go to my online shop. My It's at shop.stampincreatewithbeth.com. That is my Stampin' Up! online shopping site. And here are our cards. Where's those other layers? There they are. So we also made this one. I think this is gonna make a really pretty card. So you can have lots of fun with your embossing folders and create all kinds of layers and um, do die cuts and, and all kinds of things. So, thank you so much, Vicki and Linda and Zana. So I hope that this has given you some ideas to use embossing folders and add texture to your cards. Let me know if you have any questions. If you watched the replay, make sure you um, let me know that you watched. Don't forget to give me lots of hearts. Let me know if you love this video and you love these techniques. And feel free to share it with your crafty friends or invite them to come along and join us on Saturday mornings. Uh, next week, I am going to do what they call the spotlight te technique. And I can't wait to play with that and show you how to do that technique. So everybody have a lovely day. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you soon. Take care.